dispensationalism is a very important doctrine because it shows us by showing different time periods, different people, which verse applies to whom. But there are so many different wrong doctrines because they apply every verse to themselves. So one of the teachings to understand is that dispensationalism is in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It is biblical. You might say, well, I need proof of that. I need proof of that. Well, in order to find proof of that, you have to study Scripture with Scripture with Scripture. And that's the reason why a lot of people who are against dispensationalism, the reason why they do so is because they're too lazy to go Scripture, Scripture with Scripture, or they can't do that. So in this video, what I'm going to do is just give a simple verse. See, I'm going to give one simple verses to show you that there has to be uh, different dispensations. All right, so this will make it simplify. We're going to look at verse 17, John chapter 1 and verse 17. The first one is John 1, 17. Showing a different dispensation about grace, which did not happen before. John 1, 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So notice that at verse 17, there's a difference. Back then, it's showing that back then during the Old Testament, during Moses' time, they didn't have as much grace back then. So grace did not happen until Jesus Christ. So that's why salvation by grace alone, without works, it did not... It was not plainly or clearly seen until when Jesus Christ came. Until when Jesus Christ came. Back then, it was very different salvation. Salvation was faith and works. Now, a lot of people, they'll criticize this by saying, but you know, there, you can't deny that there were people saved by grace back then in the Bible, which is true. Not only that, if you look at verse 17, it says, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So in other words, are you saying that there was no truth before Jesus Christ? See, those are the two common criticisms. But the point is, we're not saying that there was no grace, no truth before Jesus Christ. There were grace. There was truth before Jesus Christ. But the fullness of it, the more immensity of it, was not as clear as today, which is obvious because... Back then, they stoned you to death for taking his name in vain. Today, we're under so much grace that you don't get stoned to death for that. That's just one example. But look at verse 16. Verse 16 defined it for you. It's the fullness, the immensity of it. 16. And of his fullness have we all received, and what? Grace for grace. See, this grace is very immense, exceeding. That's why this grace is different from back then. See that? Back then, at verse 17, with the Old Testament. Let's also look at Galatians 3. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians 3. Galatians chapter 3, and we're going to look at verse 23. Verse 23. Galatians 3 and verse 23. So there's no doubt from this passage, if you look at John 1, 17, the time period of grace that we're at is very much different from back then. So that proves there's a dispensation. But not only that, look at Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. We're going to look at verses 23 through 25. And verse 12. Notice that the faith today was very different from the faith back then. Why? Because it was under law. It was not completely, solely of faith. They had law with that. Look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 23. But before faith came, see, look at that. So showing right here, it wasn't as much faith back then. Before faith came, we were what? Kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. See that back then in the Old Testament, they did not have that much richness of faith or faith alone back then. It was shut up because they were under the law. That's why verse 24, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, 
that we might be justified by faith. So that's why the Old Testament law was there to show that, hey, you can't live like this anymore. And that's why eventually what? Faith came after that. Look at verse 25. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. So notice this, verse 25. Back then, we were under the schoolmaster, the law. But today, we're no longer under that. We were, we're under in faith. Now, some critics, what they're going to do is that they're going to try to point out verses 14 through 22. Galatians 3 is their favorite passage, especially 14 through 22, to try to prove that back at the Old Testament, that they were saved by faith and that the law could not save them. But what they've got to understand is this. What they've got to understand is that they cannot deny verses 23 through 25, and not only that, verse 12. And the law is not of what? It's not of faith. And if you look back at verse 23, before faith was what? The law. See that? Before faith was the law. So back then, they didn't have this much. Same thing with John 1 we saw, right? There was a difference, see that? A difference of time periods. There's no doubt about it. There was a difference right here of time periods back then. So what you're going to find out right here is that, yes, it is true. The law, what it could not do, it could not give permanent life. It could not give permanent eternal life. Faith is what gave permanent eternal life, did it not? It's what gave permanent, excuse me, it's what gave permanent eternal life. That's why this was what? This was temporary. That's why this was temporary. There's no doubt about that. Why? Because these verses show it. That back then they had to do this and it was temporary. And that's why faith had to be revealed after that. Proving right here there had to be a difference of time periods. Difference of time periods. Let's also look... At 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 10 through 12. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 through 12. What you're going to notice right here is that they did not see clearly, they did not see clearly about that salvation by grace. Salvation by grace was not seen as clearly from before back then under the Old Testament. So there's no doubt a dispensation, a difference of time periods. 1 Peter chapter 1, we're going to look at verse 10. The Bible says right here, "...of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently." who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. So notice this, that back then they did not have this salvation by grace alone. They did not have it back then. So they prophesied it to them. Verse 11, Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, so did you see that? Verse 11, they tried to search this salvation by grace and understand it, but it was not revealed to them. It was revealed to who? Verse 12, it was revealed not to the Old Testament, but to us. See that? So showing right here, this salvation by grace was not shown to them. It was shown to who? Us. We are the ones who got this, not them. They had faith and works right here. Same thing right here. They did not have this complete richness of faith alone. Same thing right here. They did not have this complete richness of grace alone. And why? Because back then, they had works. See that? Back then, they had works. Excuse me. Right here. They had works back then. So there's no doubt that there's a difference of time periods here. Difference. You can't say everything was the same back then. Everyone had the same faith, the same grace. These verses showed you it wasn't plainly, right? Those verses plainly showed you they did not have that much faith back then, grace back then. And they, no matter how hard these people searched it, they, it wasn't revealed to them.
How about that? If that's not enough, look at John 7. John chapter 7. John chapter 7. We're going to look at verse 37. So the last one is John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. What you're going to find right here was that the permanent indwelling of the Holy Ghost... was not given as much as back then at the Old Testament. Now, of course, the Holy Spirit, God would put His Spirit on the Old Testament people. You'll see that several times in the Bible. But the Bible shows right here that this indwelling, it's the same thing like with grace, faith, and other things. It was not as permanent, complete, and rich as back then in the Old Testament. Let's look at John chapter 7, verse 37 through 39. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now, there's going to be a lot of these Baptist or Calvinist covenant theology adherents. They're going to use this passage to prove, well, see, Jesus Christ right here preached salvation by grace. He preached salvation by grace before He died on the cross. So the Old Testament people had salvation by grace. Not only that, they're going to po point out a lot of verses like John 3, 3. Before Jesus died on the cross, He told them to be born again, to be saved. Not only that, you're going to find tons of Christian doctrines Jesus quoted. There are tons. And they are Christian doctrine. And they do refer to salvation by grace that Christians believe in. But they don't read the next verse, all right? Verse 39. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. See that? Even though Jesus Christ preached about this, what he's pointing out right here is they, didn't, they can't receive it yet. They didn't receive it yet until when? Until he ascended up to glory. That's why all these, that's why like Galatians 3, they'll try to pull up, or they'll try to pull up Old Testament verses where there were elements of grace. You got to realize this, even though there were elements of that, and there were elements of it taught, it was not complete and full and rich like today. See that? They did not receive it. That doesn't mean that they received this as complete and rich like we did. You know why? Because I've given you verses before, but I encourage you to just only read Old Testament. Don't read Pauline epistles. If you read Pauline epistles, you'll be biased and only go by Paul. They had faith and works for salvation. That's how it was. Amen. A lot of them, they'll say, you have to do works to maintain life. See that? So these are simple verses that show right here that there was a difference of time periods back then.